Right, well, this is 1978, so I'm in my graduate year of Elmhurst Ballet School, as it was then called, and three of us, at least, because I spotted two of them in the film, we got sent up on a minibus. Oh, you're going up to RAD headquarters um, to take part in a masterclass. So we go to the RAD, somebody comes in and says, you must warm yourselves up. Um, and then more dancers start to come into And it turns out that there were dancers there from the Royal Ballet School. And I can't really remember where the other dancers came from, but we, we were a mixed group of students brought in from several vocational schools. And slowly bits of information began to trickle through to us. Well, it's a masterclass and it's going to be by Sir Anton Dolan. We thought, good grief. Okay, gosh, better get warmed up, better get ready. And it got later and later, looking, gosh, well, we're warmed up, now we're sitting down and getting cold again. Somebody comes in and says, no, no, keep warm, keep warm, sorry, he's been delayed. And then somebody came in, and I don't think it was Eamon Andrews himself. I think it was a producer. And um, very briefly, we got this explanation. This is going to be This Is Your Life. Eamon Andrews is going to walk through that door, which is coming at the top of the fire escape, and all you have to do is just stand back and let things happen. And um, don't let on when Mr. Dolan comes to teach you, Sir Anton. So still, they didn't really, obviously intentionally, give you time to absorb this information at all. It was almost immediately that Dolan then comes in the proper doors, the main studio doors, He's wearing a big white coat. Um, he wasn't that tall, I remember. He seemed to be in something of a temper. I don't think he was particularly enchanted with the rag bag of students he'd been given to work with. But nevertheless, he did immediately start to um, teach us a pour de bras, which means um, an exercise that you do in the centre, which is all about how you carry your arms. And I remember as he set it, I thought, my God, this is a long exercise. And it's rather complicated and convoluted. Um, lots of changes of direction. And I'm thinking, oh my God, they'll wake up. At that point, just as we were getting the hang of it, Eamon walks in the doors. Um, and then you can see what happens from then on. But it was, it was a, a slightly disorientating experience, but, but great fun. Well, of course, being used to being at what used to be in those days, not now, a fairly austere boarding school, we couldn't believe the luxury. Uh, we were herded onto a very smart bus, just us few dancers, in you know, enormous 53-seater coach, uh, driven to 10 studios, um, ushered to the best seats in the house, um, and found ourselves uh, watching the recording, which was thrilling. Then Ninette, Ninette Valma, comes on and talks um, to uh, Dolan about what a wonderful partner he'd been. And of course, she'd been partnered by Dolan in her early days as a jogging dancer in panto and musical. And they'd done a lot of work together, and so it's really interesting to say, you know, she really wants to say to him, you were the most wonderful partner. And uh, for a female ballet dancer to be talking about a male, it's one of the most important things a male dancer can do. So it was so interesting how after all those decades, she was determined to say, you were just a wonderful partner. Yeah, I was fascinated uh, to be reminded that Gracie Cohn had been there. Much, much loved teacher, and she was 85, um, and fairly frail, I think, in, in the filming. Um, but you could still see this wonderful personality. I think that must have been a huge surprise. I wouldn't have thought he was expecting that at all. Um, I think they're, they're very creative. Uh, who they get in, I think. Um, I think that's one of the real strengths, isn't it? I was very touched as well to look back now and see his brother. Um, and you just got a flavour of the frisson of the relationship between the two brothers. Very different chaps. The way that uh, Dolan makes the rather disparaging remark about breeding like rabbits, which I think is really quite funny. And of course, um, great legends like um, Antoinette Sibley and Anthony Dow. Really fantastic to see. And the other thing I remember being struck by so forcibly was Jessie Matthews, because she made such a strong impression. She was very tall and lovely and so nice, so kind and so warm and really sort of bubbly and excited and just delightful. 
Uh, because the great thing was, uh, after the filming, there was the party, which again astonished me, straight from boarding school, and um, eggs and chips, you know, all of a sudden there was sort of roast legs of chicken and grapes and lots of wine, which of course we weren't allowed to have, but everybody else was thoroughly enjoying themselves. And, uh, you know, surrounded by all these legends, it, it was quite amazing. It, it just did turn into a sort of ballet get-together. Uh, but, of course, Dolan's guests were broader than that. As I say, they weren't just ballet people. Uh, but the reason that there were people like Florence Desmond and Jesse Matthews uh, was because they'd all started in musical pantomimes, popular theatre, all of them. I got quite a strong sense of irritation, right from when, before he knew about the hit, as you call it, um, he was obviously in a bad temper when he arrived. It obviously took him a while to settle in. There's, there's a fair gap of time, oh gosh, two or three hours before filming actually starts in the studio afterwards. So he'd obviously had time to settle. But I still think he looks quite... He, he's, he's guarded, isn't he? He's not quite made up his mind whether he's going to enjoy this or not. Um, I thought there were a couple of moments where he was genuinely moved, um, which was interesting and not necessarily when you would have expected him to be. So I think he was genuinely surprised, surprised by Gracie Cohen. Um, but I think when uh, the Danish doctor who'd, help, who'd saved his foot, I think just then he was really astonished. Um, but that's the only moment I can think of when he really was. Uh, might be wrong. He was the first indigenous star to um, really excel in both popular theatre and be a huge star in popular theatre. I think it's very hard for us to remember how very much frowned upon it was for a young man to go into ballet. Tights are a big problem. Blokes in tights. Um, I think people were very, very mistrustful um, of all of that and regarded ballet as a rather airy, fairy, sugar-coated sort of a world. I think he really helped to break that barrier down. But he became the director of a major international ballet company, earned some real foreign bucks for the country. Um, you know, the mark of a Dolan ballet and uh, festival ballet really important. And because he had such broad roots in popular theatre, you know, I just think he made respectable, made it more possible for a lot more boys to go into the profession. He, he was a professional uh, with his feet in many, many different fields, you know, a, a, a master of many different fields, and earned a jolly good living as well. So I think he was really groundbreaking in that way.